Hi, this is Claire here, and I'd like to show you how to make a simple nickel silver ring using a ring bender. So if you just look over here, uh, the first thing to do is to cut some strips of nickel silver and you measure your finger. I have cut these strips to seven and a half centimetres and I'm going to anneal them. So I turn on my gas and light it from the side and anneal it. So annealing will soften the metal and make it more pliable. And I'm looking for the colour to move along that metal. Right, so I have annealed one already, so I'll let those two cool. They're best to cool gradually, and this is one that I have previously annealed. Seems to have a bit of flux or something on it, which I'll pick off. And I'll just put it, place it onto my steel block here, which ensures that I can handle it because I will have to put it on my ring bender. Now, there's other ways of doing this, but a ring bender is a, a really easy way of doing it. I have just a, a simple ring bender here. It's actually hard plastic, uh, but it works quite well. So, the ring bender has a, a number of different fittings for different size rings that you might want to make. And that is the mechanism that bends. So I'm just going to put in one end piece here and the other section fits into that little slot. So the ring bender is now set and when I move this handle it will push the metal that's in this position into that cylinder type shape. Okay, so I'm assuming that this might now be cooled. It's always safety first with this. I'll just test, test it and it's quite cool. So starting from the end, and I've got it wedged on a board, a bench board here, and again, I use my body to brace it. So I'll just start on the end, and I find it good to secure that with my finger just to stop it from coming out. It's, there's probably much better quality ring benders on the market. But this was my first foray, foray into ring benders. So I just bought a fairly cheap one. It's lasted quite well, but I think the time has come for me to buy a metal one for school use. You can see, you could secure uh, bolt a ring bender to a bench and it would be easy to handle. So I'll just show you how it's progressing. Do you see the nickel silver is curving around gradually? And I'm gradually getting that right around. I can see I'm going to have a bit of an overlap here, which is not ideal, but I might have to cut that. So you can see the ring here has been bent right around. So I'm going to make a larger ring. So I'll just open that up. I probably could change to a larger size of fitting. Since I'm going to make a larger ring rather than do a cut. Because you should really measure and do the cut before you bend it. I'll just go around once more. Uh, the next thing to do is to make sure that the rings, the ring actually joins very accurately and smoothly for soldering. That's the next phase of this process. And I'm not going to worry so much about the shape because I can use the ring mandrel to really get that perfectly circular. So, how to do that? is um, to use some files and some sandpaper. So I've got some files here. I'll just sit down. I find these bench board, these boards very good for filing also. I've got a flat file and just separating them a little bit. 
where the join is, I find a file that's triangular removes any of the shine where you're going to solder. So just removing that shine. And that will make the solder spread through that joint really accurately. There's a certain gloss on that metal from the manufacturing process. Now, it has to be an exact fit. So, some of the ways you can get a really exact fit is to use some pliers and to actually bend them and flatten them a little bit so they meet accurately. And you can see it's not meeting accurately. You use two pairs of pliers and you, the solder will not jump. So you make it a very accurate join. And then on sandpaper. So I've got a sandpaper board here. I've got some pretty strong sandpaper there. Initially, I'll use that. But then some emery paper will scratch the metal much less. So far, that join is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And inside, I can finish it. I have a, a, a file here which has a curved surface, and I'm just going to file the inside. So that's a really accurate join. I'm happy with that. I'm not asking it to leap across great distances because solder will not do that. So I'm going to set that up now over here. So in this soldering station, I have not got my I love to really like use a carbon block for soldering because it doesn't draw any heat um, whereas most surfaces will take some of the heat away from the metal. The next thing to do is to apply flux so I have a little brush perfectly for this task that one is being put in upside down so just a little bit of flux exactly on that join inside and out so the flux helps the solder flow i'm just going to put that there and um, i have put some flux onto a scribe and i've got some very easy flow um, solder and i just put that to the side like that this is my little method of doing it lighting the soldering iron. Playing, the whole piece needs to heat up and you can see the solder bubbling so the solder goes dark and yucky coloured but once it goes clear, see it's quite dark, once it goes clear you know when the flux is clear that's the right time to apply the solder and it's melting and just play the, the flame down where I want it to go because so it will follow the flame and I can see it's gone right along that seam beautifully so I can turn it off. So soldering is, uh, well it's something that you improve with with experience and that's quite hot. It's also annealed which is fantastic because that means I can put that onto um, I can put that onto a ring mandrel and shape that pretty quickly so I'll just get you to have a look at the ring mandrel and I'll just put it on it's quite safe to do this she says <laughs> and um, I like to use this on a wooden board so I'll just move some of this equipment needed to the side and I'll just tap that gradually to make it more circular. Now, you should use a hide hammer for this process, and I have a hide hammer here, but I'm just concerned the ring might be still a bit hot. Okay, so turning that over, you can see just tapping that. I have that 
nice and circular. Now, I'm not going to hammer it too much because, um, because there is fire scale on it from the heating process. And if you hammer it too much with that fire scale on, it can stain the metal. And I don't want it to be stained. I'd like to be able to polish it up and not have to polish out some staining blobs. So I'm going to actually put that into the pickle, the sulfuric acid pickle, into the chemical cupboard. So I'm going to put that in now. It could, it could take like five to ten minutes before I start the next process, which is finishing. So thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed learning how to use a ring bender. Bye.